Hi everybody and welcome to Jewel Family Farm. Today um, I'm going to show you a recipe. Um, it's called uh, tea cakes, so little uh, vanilla cookies, and um, they're really good. A uh, really good cookie. They're just a small little cookie, but they've got a lot of flavor to them. All right, so let's fix the camera and we'll get started. Pull all this up forward so you can see what I'm doing here. All of this is made by hand. You don't have to uh, use a mixer for it, which is another good thing that I like about it because um, sometimes you just don't want to pull out a mixer. You just, you know. And so we have um, one and a half. Uh, we have. I'm sorry. One cup of butter, and I chopped it up, diced it up, and uh, put it in there, and it's all melted down. And then we're going to add into that one and a half cups of sugar and you can use a whisk or you can just use a spoon or a fork or whatever you want to use I'll start out with this first and then I might move over to something else I have the fan running in the background I hope you can hear me okay it's kind of it's not too um, hot to turn the air on but uh, it's cool enough to have the fan running it's a little bit warm in here but not too bad let me get a spoon Stir that up. Mash it up really good. All right. And then you just go down the line um, on the ingredients. And I'll, I'll put the ingredients, um, I'll link them at the bottom. And then you use one egg. But I know that it's it's um, at least from the 1900s, if not earlier than that. These are southern tea cakes. Tea that, you know, a lot of people served. I, I'm assuming probably back in the day when you would have sit down in the afternoon for some tea and a little dessert of some kind. All right, and then we're going to use one teaspoon of vanilla. And I don't know how many of you do it, but I just use this little cap and put two little capfuls in there. And I call that a teaspoon. You can measure yours out. That's just how I do it. But it calls for one teaspoon of vanilla. You know, I'm supposed if you wanted to put like lemon extract or some, or coconut extract in this, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure you could, if you wanted that little hint of flavor instead of vanilla, I'm sure this, this recipe would adapt to that just fine. Just give it a little bit of a different taste. Maybe even some lemon zest and maybe some, you know, little drops of lemon will make you some little lemon cookies. It's a pretty versatile little recipe, and um, I'm sure you can do lots of things with it. All right. Now, it calls for self-rising flour, but I didn't have any self-rising flour. So what I did was I used two and a half cups of regular flour and then I added three and a half teaspoons of baking soda and one half teaspoon of salt and I just put it in there and I'm just going to mix it all up with a, just whisk it around a little bit mix it up really good that makes self-rising flour right there if you don't have self-rising flour you just have that that's an easy way to go but you can use self-rising flour for this. And, I, and I've and i heard in a, uh, that the white lily flour um, makes these cookies really good. way it doesn't poof out at you when you start to stir it if you do just a little at a time. 
You know how flour does sometimes? You put it in a bowl and you go to stir it and it all poofs up and gets all over your clothes. And these are good little tea cakes though. They, I don't know, um, I know when we were little, mom used to buy those, um, sometimes she would, sometimes she would go and buy those um, little refrigerator, um, Pillsbury refrigerator cookies and um, make those at Christmas time. And you know, we do just cut them out or could slice them out and then we put the little sprinkles on top. Well, these taste like that. Uh, these are a whole lot better, but they're similar and they're that kind of a cookie. So just in case you wanted to know how they kind of like what they taste like, but they're a real soft cookie and they're really, really good. And they're very easy to make. They don't take a whole lot of time. Like I said, you don't have to use a mixer. I guess you could if you wanted to, but I don't know. Sometimes I just want something that's quick. Quick and easy. This would be a good recipe for if you're in a hurry to go, you have to take something, you know, like for a cookie exchange or a dessert for kids or whatever, a little tea cakes for adults, you know. It's a little stiff, but that's okay. It's not too hard to mix. All right. My hands have been washed. My hands are clean. I am going to take my rings off. Let me go rinse my hands off one more time. Sometimes you mix a little bit better um, with your hands. It's a nice soft dough. I guess if you wanted to, you could lay like a little M&M on top or a little nut or I guess you could put some coconut in it if you wanted to. You can do probably, probably whatever you want, but this is, this is, these are really, really good just plain like, like they are. So it makes up a dough like those Pillsbury, like the Pillsbury recipe, you know. It's a sugar cookie, a vanilla sugar cookie. All right, so that's kind of like what you do. And you just pinch your little piece off, depending on how big you want. If you want to make a whole lot of little smaller cookies, you just roll them around. I just flatten them out a little bit and lay them on the pan. I got them, I got them on parchment paper, so just lay them down there. You make them as big as you want, usually about a large marble, or maybe a little bit bigger than a large marble. I don't know if anybody knows what a large marble is anymore. <laughs> I don't know if kids play with marbles anymore. But um, I'm trying to think of something that's a comparison to uh, It's about this size, but I can't think of anything right off hand. Try to make them as much of the same size as you possibly can. And you just keep doing that until you get your pan full. You have to put them about a couple inches apart. They do spread out a little bit. Uh, not a whole lot though. <clears throat> the butter gets warm, you know, it makes the cookies spread out. I'm gonna scoop these apart just a little bit more. So I got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five across. So I think I'm gonna go three down, five across on one pan. See how many of these make. I'm not sure how many these make. I think they make about two dozen, but I'm not sure. We'll see though once they cook. You can make them as small or as big as you want. Just remember if you make them smaller, you can space them closer together. If you make them larger, you have to space them further apart because they are going to spread out. All right, we're just about got three rows deep here. Oh, 
trying to think of something else that's the size of a marble. I can't think of one. See that? I didn't get. I can't see it. They're a little bit different size. Well, about the same size, I guess. I only have one that's a little bit smaller than the rest. I had a cookie, um, you know, one of those, you can use a one or one and a half inch um, cookie, what do you call those things? It looks like an ice cream scraper, but you can use it for cookies. And that makes them more even. And I had one, I can't find it. But um, when I make them with that, they really come out uniform and really nice. All right, I'm gonna stick these in the oven. And uh, when they're done, um, I'll bring them out and show you. You want them to cook at 350. Um, start them out at about eight minutes. Um, let me see. Start them out at about eight minutes. It's crooked. <laughs> and then start checking them because you don't want them to get overdone. These are a real soft, um, chewy cookie and you just want the edges to brown. So make sure you, at about eight minutes, start looking at them. As soon as the edges get uh, a golden brown, then they're about ready to come out and put on your um, cooling rack. All right, be back in a few. Okay, so here they are out of the oven. I wanted to show you what they look like. It took 14 minutes for these to bake. See how they're golden brown around the edges and that's what you're looking for. So you don't want to overcook them. You don't want it to be real, real brown on top, but you want them to uh, be brown, you know, nice and golden around the edges. See if I can scoop this over a little bit. They make nice little cookies though, and they're very good. They're not too sweet, but they're soft and chewy, and they taste like um, a, sugar, a buttery sugar cookie. They're really tasty. So let these cool all the way before you eat them. You can eat them warm. They're better. I mean, they taste good warm, of course. Any cookie tastes good warm, but uh, before you store them, let them cool all the way. Otherwise, you're liable to, um, you know, collect moisture in whatever you do, the container that you have them in, and it's liable to um, make them mold, you know. So you got the cookies cool all the way, especially if they're homemade cookies, but that's what they look like, and they, they really smell really good. So anyway, I have my, my tea here. have my cookie. So I hope you try this recipe and I hope you like it. Um, it's a very simple recipe. It's not hard at all as you can see and uh, I want to see if I can take a bite of it. It's still kind of warm. It's pretty brown on the bottom. Very good. They look different. Um, I made some look a little different than this, so they're not all going to look alike every single time you make them. I mean, they're, they're round, of course, and they're gold brown, but sometimes, according to I don't know uh, the weather, I guess, or the butter, or I don't I don't know what it is, but sometimes they look a little flatter, a little rounder, a little thinner. These are quite thick. These thickened up quite a bit. And it could be the flour that I used. You know, I didn't use the uh, white lily. I used, um, well, you know, the off-brand flour because that's all I get right now. But um, I have made them with the white lily flour. And I've, I've also used the southern uh, uh, cake flour and different things like that that I have, uh, you know, used to make them in. They're not quite as, they don't turn out quite as thick. But anyway, they're a very delicious cookie, and I hope you enjoy them. And um, I'm going to start trying to upload some more cooking shows because uh, those seem to uh, attract more uh, people to my channel. So if you um, would like to subscribe, I certainly would appreciate it. And uh, 
you, you can hit the little bell and you'll get notified every time I upload a video. And I, uh, again, I hope you enjoy this cookie and um, I'll see you next time. Take care and hopefully all this COVID will go away soon and everybody will be safe from that and um, count your blessings. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye.